This morning, we are so glad to have you with us on this Good Shepherd Sunday. Our readings today will all have to do with Jesus, our Good Shepherd. We'd also like to uh, welcome any visitors who are here this morning, as well as those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, we invite everyone here to fill out uh, the pew pad that's at the end of the line, at the end of your row. Just fill it out and pass it down so we have your contact information. The last, the very last community gathering put together by our, by our transition team is taking place at noon today in the meeting room around the corner. If you registered, that's where you need to go. If you didn't register, please come. Uh, these meetings have been very helpful for our transition team as they make plans to fill out our paperwork uh, to begin the process of calling a new lead pastor. Our community garden ministry is looking for volunteers. If you have a little bit of time to uh, prepare, plant, weed, water, or pick vegetables uh, in the garden, you don't have to do all those things. That's why we have a team. But if you're interested in helping, contact Chris Groth. His information is in the messenger. You should have received a messenger uh, via email. If you did not and you would like to make sure you're on that mailing list, please call the church office. You can also pick up a print copy on the rack right outside here in the Parish Life Center. Uh, and please check out the messenger because there's lots going on here and we do not want you to miss any of it. Today, I would like to introduce Connie Frankenfeld. She is a disciple here at St. John's and she is going to talk a little bit about LSSI, Lutheran Social Services in Illinois. Good morning. Good morning. I uh, am a member of the Board of Trustees for the Cornerstone Foundation. And the Cornerstone Foundation uh, is a foundation that makes sure that funding for LSSI, which is Lutheran Social Services of Illinois, will remain fairly steady. Um, they really became instrumental when the state didn't have a budget. Y'all remember that? Um, <laughs> yeah, not a good time. Uh, I was asked to tell you a little bit about why I'm interested in LSSI. My family has supported LSSI for a long time, a, a couple generations. We, I grew up near uh, the Nachusa children's home, and uh, which function has completely changed as the, as the world changes. But uh, 
that's always been something that we supported. Uh, now I find that unlike it used to be where we thought LSSI was just for the Chicago area, they are all over the state. There are, uh, there's a wonderful prison ministry in southern Illinois. Some of you maybe have read books for the, uh, or not read books, but taken books to prisons for people to read for their recordings for their children to keep in touch. I know you used to have fundraisers. Well, I'm not going to ask you that right now. There is a gentleman from LSSI who's going to come next weekend and tell you a lot more about it. Uh, but this is something that I got involved a little deeper in because and one of the many reasons that I join a church is that I can't be a good Samaritan to everybody. I look to LSSI to be more of a good Samaritan or a good, yeah, good Samaritan to Illinois people. And I give to the ELCA hunger fund or disaster fund until to cover the whole world. We're out there doing these things, but of course only if the local congregations support it. You have a little colorful book leaflet in your uh, bulletin, and it's um, a way to support LSSI. And as I said, next weekend you'll hear a lot more about it, and if you want to wait till then, that's fine. But please remember that this is our social services arm. It's part of us. We're part of it. And I ask you to... Sincerely pray about it and consider your role in it, the Lutheran Social Services. Thank you. We invite you to stand as you're able and share God's peace with one another.
Actually, my husband is just kind of going along for the ride. It was all my idea. <laughs> we are getting rid of our front yard, and we are making a pollinator garden. We have a tiny front yard, but even so, it's a big job. But the other day, I was out digging in the dirt, and I was overwhelmed with how much life is there that we don't even notice. The earthworms and and the little mealworms, and the spiders, and the bugs. And as I was finishing up my task for the day, I was sweeping the front porch. We have a lot of those sweet gumballs, you know, those really irritating things that fall from the trees. And I was sweeping the front porch, and I thought I was sweeping the sweet gumballs, and then I noticed. I was actually sweeping three tiny birds that had fallen out of a nest. We have um, a finch nest up on the top of one of our pillars, and it was there last, last spring. And mother and father finches both um, take care of their little babies. And it was fun to watch that. Well, they came back to the same place this year, and we heard the little babies up there. And in the winds and the storms this last week, apparently, they blew out. And my heart kind of broke a bit. And as I was thinking about Good Shepherd Sunday, I think about how Jesus calls us to be in his nest, in the sheepfold, to keep us safe. And then sometimes the storms of life or things that we're attracted to call us out of that nest or blow us out of that nest. And so what I did was I entrusted those little birds to God and I buried them knowing that they will fertilize and hopefully bring new life. But I wondered if that mother bird and father bird's hearts were breaking a bit. I know that Jesus' heart breaks when we try to fly away too soon, when the winds of life blow us out of the nest. And unlike those baby birds, we know that Jesus picks us back up and gives us new life. So let's go to God in silent prayer and let's confess those times that we try to fly away to follow things that are not good for us or lay down before him those burdens, the, all of the winds of life that are blowing us around. Let us pray. Jesus, your heart breaks when we wander off. You cry when we cry, whether it is grief or loss or anger. You are with us. Help us to trust that you love us beyond measure, that 
you pick us up and carry us home. Forgive us for those times we wander off. Strengthen us for those times that we need strength and give us patience where we need it. Most of all, fill us with your love, with your mercy, with your grace, so that we may go out and look for your lost sheep. It's in your name we pray. Amen. How's everybody today? Good? Well, I was on vacation for two weeks, and I came back with a bad back and a cold. <laughs> so maybe it's not a good thing to go on vacation. So today is Good Shepherd Sunday. What's a shepherd? 
Village is a shepherd. It's someone who takes care of sheep. Someone who takes care of sheep. That's right. And Jesus today says, I'm the good shepherd. And there's two things that he says today in our reading, our gospel reading. One is that he knows us so that we can know him. He knows us so we can know him. He knows our name. So who knows your name? Your parents? Good. God knows our name. Your grandma? Okay. Your friends? Your mom? Anybody else? Who knows your name? Schoolmates? Jesus knows our name. As the good shepherd, he knows our name. And he, how do we know that he knows our name? How do we know that? It escaped you. Because he loves us. And how do we know he loves us? How do we know he loves us? How do we know he knows our name? He what? He does good things for us. Also because we were baptized, right? And when we were baptized, we received not only our name, the name that has been chosen for us by our parents, but we got Jesus' name because we were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we know Jesus knows our name because we've been baptized. And we know Jesus loves us because we were baptized and we received his name. So wherever we go and whatever we do, we know that Jesus knows us by name and is with us every day and loves us all the time. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Always remind us of your love and care and that you know us by name. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, come and get a bulletin and some candy. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Reading from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, 
not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's really three takeaways from today's gospel. The first one is the one we just talked about with the children. That God knows our name. That God knows us intimately that God, through Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, cares about us and loves us unconditionally. Even though he knows all of our foibles, all of our failings, all of our shortcomings, all of our dilemmas, all of our problems, all of our hurts and pains, he knows us thoroughly and loves us and forgives us as his children. When I, was a, when I was a young boy and we'd be playing down the street and it got to be supper time, my mom would say, Leonard, time to come home for dinner. Anybody ever have that happen? <laughs> and although at times... Reluctantly, I would go home for dinner. I didn't want to always answer her call. I wanted to stay and play. And sometimes that's true for us too. We don't always want to answer the call. We want to stay and do other things. Whatever diverts us from being part of God's family, which is really the next point, that just being named doesn't make us individuals. 
Jesus creates a flock. We are part of a community. The Good Shepherd keeps us together as part of the mission and ministry of God to us. When I was serving in a congregation, the retired pastor, a retired pastor, and his wife raised sheepdogs. And they had a little flock of sheep so they could train the sheepdogs to keep them together. And of course, that was the task of the sheepdog to keep the flock together, to keep people connected. And when one would kind of wander or stray over there, they would come over and round them up and bring them back to the fold. Our good shepherd does that for us too. When we wander or stray from the fold, that Jesus comes to find us, to bring us back, to reconnect us, through his body and blood, through the bread and wine of Holy Communion. He connects us and keeps us connected for the sake of our ministry to be and make disciples. Which is the third point. Jesus says there are other sheep that are not of this fold, and I will bring them too, so that there might be one flock, and one shepherd. So who are those people in your world that are not part of the fold, but who need to hear the invitation that God loves them and wants them to be part of the sheepfold? I'm, I'm wondering who that might be. Could it, could it be your hairdresser? Could it be your plumber? Could it be your neighbor next door or across the street? Maybe even closer to home, could it be your son or daughter or godson or goddaughter who maybe has strayed away and needs to be encouraged to become part of the fold once more? Or maybe it's somebody who's never been part of the fold and needs to hear that invitation that Jesus loves them, knows them, and cares for them. So those are the three things that Jesus wants to impart to us today. One, that we're known. He knows us, and we know him. That this isn't a solo endeavor, but it is indeed a community. We are part of a, a flock that Jesus calls and brings together for the sake of mission and ministry. And that we are asked, commanded even, to go and share this good news of the Good Shepherd to all who may need to hear it and who are not yet part of the sheepfold. Amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm caught in the 
thank you for the many gifts that you shower upon us and we thank you for the gifts that have been gathered this day use them to increase your fold and use us and our lives to be part of your mission in the world in jesus name we pray amen, amen. and let us go to god in prayer god good and gracious you never let go of us Help us to trust that you are holding us through all the storms of this life. We pray for the church. Hold on to the church in these times of division, that the church may glorify you alone above all else. And we pray that you will hold on to those who struggle, who struggle because of imprisonment, homelessness, abandonment, disability, those who are marginalized in any way because of who they are. We pray that you will gather them in, that they will know that you hold them and use us, your church, your body in the world to be part of that mission, to gather in your flock so that they know that you know them by name, that you love them beyond measure and they are not alone. And we pray for this earth and all of the life that it supports. Help us to be good stewards of what you have entrusted to us, that we too may love what you love, that we may love all that you have created, that we may tend to it with the same care that you care. 
We pray for those in our community who struggle in mind, body, or spirit, including Judy, Dan, Libby, Mary Lou, and Darlene, Anne, Jenny, Mary Kay, Pastor Florent, Linda, Harry, and Mike, Keith, Sue, Vicki, Barbara, Debbie, John, Joanne, Shar, and those we name before you silently or aloud. Gather them to yourself. Help them to know that you carry them through the storms of life. We pray all of this in the name of the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for us, his sheep. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We believe that this is the Lord's table, and all Christians who believe that Jesus meets us in this meal with grace and mercy and gathers us to himself are invited to join us at the table. Please come forward, hold out your hand for bread. We have gluten-free available as well. Then you can help yourself to either red wine or white grape juice. We will commune the acolytes and the communion assistants first, then the musicians, and then simply come forward. All is ready and all are welcome.
you to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus at this table, you have reminded us that we are yours and you have showered us and filled us with grace and mercy. May we respond to your call and hear your voice as you lead us into the world to seek out those who are lost. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. In my wrestling my 